For starters, let's try to define what a fractal figure is, or simply a fractal. It is a geometrical form whose pattern repeats itself indefinitely. This can be observed at every scale. To understand how such a figure works, let's start by drawing a line. We divide this line into three equal pieces and then draw an equilateral triangle on the center part. We can now remove the center part which has been replaced by two lines of the same size. We continue our drawing by repeating the same steps on each new part. We could continue doing this indefinitely, but I will stop here. It's already quite complicated as it is. This figure is called the Koch curve. If we observe one side of our first iteration, we can see that the figure is identical to our whole figure. And if we take a small part of that figure, we can see that again, it is identical to the whole. This is what we call a fractal. To strictly describe a fractal, we must observe its dimension. Different kinds of dimensions exist, the Euclidean one, the topological one, and the fractal dimension. In our case, only the fractal dimension is interesting. It is defined by d equals log n divided by log m, where n is the number of parts obtained after iteration, and m is the homothetic ratio. So it's in how many parts we divide the initial part. For the Koch curve, we divide our segment into three equal parts, so m equals 3, and we obtain four segments that are each one-third of the initial length, so n equals 4. This gives us a dimension d equals log 4 divided by log of 3, that's equal to 1.26. So to see if our Koch curve is a fractal or not, its fractal dimension must either be greater than its topological dimension or not a whole number. In our case, this is verified, so the Koch curve is a fractal. We can now give a more rigorously defined definition of a fractal. It is an object which is too irregular to be defined by the usual geometric vocabulary, is self-similar, which means that each part of the object resembles its whole, and has a non-whole dimension, or one that is greater than its topological dimension. Now we know what a fractal is, but what is it used for? Many applications exist, but I will only cite a few. First of all, we can make beautiful figures like this, or this, but it also gives us a way of describing physical phenomena such as a fluid's turbulent behavior, or a galaxy's organization in space, or even the geometrical shape of a Romanesco broccoli. Fractals are also a way of compressing images with constant quality for every zoom. Now, let's use Timio to draw a fractal composed of a big circle withholding three smaller circles, which each withhold three smaller circles. We could repeat this an infinite number of times. 